Abamaru became the strongest ninja in his clan by the age of 16. His skills combined with his cold and calm appearance made him almost immortal. But one day while performing another mission, Gabamaru is betrayed by his comrades and gets captured, resulting in the ultimate punishment, death. They chose to end it by slicing his head off. The executioner raises his blade, asking about his last words, but he has none. The executioner then gives a powerful swing, but nothing happens. He keeps trying and trying but the blade breaks into two before it can slice through Gabamara's neck. Everyone around cannot believe their eyes but Gabamara can only think about why he can't just die. Later at night, he gets visited by Sagi. She's an inspector who wants to understand his life and why the blade couldn't kill him. They talk about his past and his clan. She wants to know if he didn't die because he's attached to life but Gabamara doesn't have any attachments. He had come from the ninja clan where everyone is taught to kill from the moment they are born. They go through painful and deadly training but those who survive end up developing as superhuman bodies. She gets curious and asks if he can show her ninjutsu but he simply refuses. The next day, they decide to use another execution method, burning at the stake. The flames will give him unimaginable pain, destroying his skin, muscles and in the end his bones but once again, Gabamaro is still alive, his body is barely injured. Sagi asks if he's trying to resist, but he claims that he isn't, their attempts are just lame. She tries to get more into his past, asking about his family. He explains his parents were killed by the clan leader when he was still a baby but he doesn't know why and he doesn't care about it. When asked about his dreams, he had none. He only killed people and completed his missions as a ninja. He doesn't see any value in life. He grew up learning how to kill without showing emotion. Sagi then asks how he got caught and why. He explains he tried to stop being a ninja and the clan leader allowed it if he completed one last mission but that mission was only a trap for his comrades to betray and catch him. After all the failed attempts, the executors decide to use their cruelest method. They will split him apart by pulling his limbs. They will tie him up with ropes and use some bull strength to pull him in half. The animals start moving, stretching the ropes until it reaches their max and in the next split second, it pulls the animals back, collapsing in front of Gabamaru. Once again, they fail to kill him. Nobody can believe it and neither does he. Why nothing works on him, why can't he just die? And that's where Sagi notices something strange. Gabamaru doesn't have any will to live, but he attempted to leave the clan. She doesn't understand how he who doesn't have dreams wanted to leave the clan. He was the strongest in the clan, to the point that he married the chief's daughter. But marrying her was a living nightmare. She was the opposite of him. She was carefree and naive. She didn't look like someone from their clan. She turned his life upside down and he could not come to love her. She pestered him every time he came home, to remove his shoes when coming inside, forcing him to pray together, say thank you for the meal and express gratitude for their lives. To him, he was living a nightmare. He knew that if he kept living with her, he would lose his cold nature and that would make him fail the missions so he decided to ask the clan leader to get divorced and leave the clan. The leader accepted his decision but Gabamara had to do one last mission and that is when they sprung the trap and captured him. He was betrayed and realized he could not escape the village because they would find him. So, he decided to give up and accepted his fate. Later at night, Sagi gets approached by a guard. He told her not to get too close to Gabamaro as he is dangerous. He is a monster who killed 20 men when they came to arrest him. He also mentions the rumors that every ninja from his clan is immortal because they drank the elixir of life. She gets startled to hear about the elixir but starts to suspect Gabamaru even more. He claimed to be someone who's empty, someone who doesn't shed tears or blood, someone who wants to be killed, but he fought back when they tried to capture him and she knows he's been resisting the execution attempts. At the same time, Gabamaro starts to think about her words. Why is he resisting something he's asking for? When he was about to be beheaded, he used his power to break the blade. When they tried to burn him at the stake, he used his powers to survive, and when they tried to split him apart, he used his strength to pull the animals back. Something deep inside him is activating his abilities to prevent him from dying but he promises that tomorrow would be his final day. They pour boiling oil all over him, burning his body, but he simply walks away without any injury. He was wide-eyed and in disbelief. Why can't he just die, why is he resisting so much? 
he was supposed to be empty. What does he regret so much that prevents him from dying but the investigator had enough? She already knew the answer. The guards take him underground where he meets Sagi again but this time, she has a katana next to her. She is a decapitator from the Asiman clan. Gabamara gets shocked as he quickly recognizes her clan, who are famous for being the best executors. Gabamaro's eyes widely open, as he senses that she can easily cut his head off and recognizes her as the real deal. He starts to panic and breaks his handcuffs off. In a flash, Sagi appears behind him and swings her sword. He dodges out of instinct, and she comes at it again. He dodges again and realizes he doesn't want to die. She explains that he's been lying to himself the whole time. He claimed that he accepted death, but he has one reason to keep him alive. His wife. He said that he hated her, but he doesn't. He was once empty, but his wife changed him. He told her about all the things he hated about his wife, but in fact, those are the things he values the most. He gets enraged and attacks her. His intense burning eyes confirm to Sagi that she was right. He yells for her to shut up, and charges at her saying that he's hollow, but memories of his wife flood his mind telling him that he's not empty. She's the only one who believed that he was kind and not a ruthless killer. He didn't believe her words, but he explains she knows it because he was the only person who was able to look at her face. In their clan, women are just seen as something that can produce an heir, but she wanted to live a normal life so, her father decided to burn her face, so she couldn't ever have the right to it. Despite it, she never quit on her dream and wants to live a normal life with him. He wasn't convinced and she gives him a little kiss, making him blush and realize that he's not really empty. Back to the fight, he swings his sword, yelling that he's a heartless monster, but deep down, he keeps thinking about how he got into this. He always went back home, covered in blood and injuries and she took care of him with a smile on her face. And with time, he decided that he had to change. She deserved better, so he planned to stop being a ninja and live a normal life, but that's when he was betrayed. He finally realized that he was living a dream and that would be impossible to come true. At that moment, Sagi pulls out a scroll of pardon from the shogun. She reveals that his crimes will be forgiven. Him and his wife will be protected, but for that, he needs to complete one mission. He must travel to a mystical island and compete with other criminals to retrieve the elixir of life. Gabamaru is taken aback by this statement. She explains the shogun sent five search parties to the island, but none came back alive. The only thing that came back was their corpses turning into flowers. The shogun became even more obsessed with finding the elixir of life. He decided to send skilled criminals sentenced to death to the island, and the one who gets the elixir will get forgiven for all his crimes. She also talks about his wife. She's safe, but she isolated herself waiting for him to come back. Sagi then asks him what will he do, go on this mission and find a way to be reunited with his wife, or die right here, right now. The magistrates, getting frustrated at this absurdity, step in claiming they will take both of their heads and Gabamaru remembering the sweet innocent smile of his wife makes his decision. Tears stream down from his face and he asks Sagi if she still wants to see his ninjutsu and in the next second, his body gets covered by flames, burning everyone. After jumping from the pile of burning corpses, Gabamaris tells that he will find the elixir and promises himself that he will survive and return to his wife's side. Let me know in the comments if you would like me to continue the series and if you enjoyed watching this video, consider liking and subscribing for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.